Last week, I ended up rebuilding our Barfly members website with the new design I came up with, and it quickly became one of the most dynamic websites I've ever built. Thanks to block visibility, I was able to make one template show in about six different views for people based on different taxonomies, event types, or whether the user's logged in or logged out. It's all really simple to do, and it can create all kinds of advanced functionality inside your website. If you're interested in checking out how I did it, then stick around and let's get started. So here inside Figma, you can see these four different essentially views that I need for this project. Now there's actually a couple more, we'll get to those here in a second, but for the main part, there's these four different views. We have upcoming events and past events, which need to be displayed a little bit differently. And we also have a view for logged out visitors versus logged in visitors. So let's take a look at what some of those differences are. So if I zoom into this one here, what we're seeing here is an upcoming event for logged out people. They're gonna get the hero, everybody's gonna get the hero, but they're gonna get a featured image here, the description of the event, and then they're going to get this little bar here that says they need to log in or sign up in order to get access. Now, if they are logged in and they're a member of the Barfly community, we scroll over to this side. All of it's the same until we get down here. They actually have the button here to add this to the calendar or join the Zoom call. So really, all we need to do on this one is swap out this section here. But if we go to a past event, we want to change several things. One, we don't really need the featured image. In fact, it would be nicer if that was just completely replaced by the replay video. Once the event is over with, nobody really cares about the featured image. What they want to come and see is the actual content. So I want to replace that featured image with the video. Obviously, now we no longer need the add to calendar links or the Zoom link because the event is passed. Of course, if you're logged out, we go over here. We don't want them to see that video, but I thought it'd be nice to put in kind of a blurred image of the video so people could see that they're actually missing something here with, of course, this members only little tag on top of it. Now, I wanted to move the login or sign up flag up right underneath the video. Previously, it was down here below the description. If we look back up at this one, it was down here. But here, since they're gonna be seeing where the video would be right here, I want the login or sign up to be really close to that. And then, of course, we'll just keep the description here and this information down below it. Now, the problem with doing something like this is I didn't wanna set up four different templates just to accomplish this. If, for example, I wanted to change something about this layout, I would have to go into four different templates and change it across all of them. So my goal was to be able to accomplish all these different views inside of one template. So what I did next is just put everything that could possibly be on this page into one view here and then annotated it a bit. So if we zoom in here a little bit, we can see the featured image. That's gonna show to all users, but for future events only. Now this blurred image of the video, that's only gonna show to logged out users, but past events only. This login or sign up that's close to the video, again, that's logged out and past events only. The video embed here will show to logged in visitors since they're the only ones that have access to get the replays, but that video is only gonna show for past events because obviously for upcoming events, we don't have a video to show yet. Now, if it is an upcoming event, we wanna have this add to calendar and join Zoom buttons, but that's only for logged in users. The description here will be for all users for both future and past events. This login or sign up is only for people who are logged out, but only for future events. And then that comment I made about there being an additional view, down here, this is details about our happy hour calls, which are just some of the types of events we do inside the Barfly community. We also have webinars and other things like that. I only want this little blurb to show if it is a happy hour event, because this just gives people kind of a description of what happy hour is in case they're not familiar with it or they haven't been to it yet. Now, I could have saved myself a whole lot of trouble and just put all of this information behind the login, but the problem with that is if somebody's interested in checking out the Barfly community, they have no idea what's there. By setting things up like this, people can see all the events and giveaways and things we have going on, but the access to those things is restricted away behind a login. Because of that, this website really serves a dual purpose for me, not only to deliver all the content to the Barfly members, but to also market the Barfly community. For that reason, it's definitely worth setting all these kinds of things up. So in order to accomplish doing all of this inside of one template, obviously we're gonna be using Generate Press and Generate Blocks and the Elements feature to create this template, but we need a way to show and hide this information dynamically. To do that, I use the Block Visibility plugin, which is absolutely amazing and totally free inside the repo. Now it does work off of conditions, so we need to set up a few different conditions here. One is a taxonomy that will control whether it's a past or future event, so we're gonna call that event schedule. 
The other is the event type. So here we have happy hour, but we also have things like webinars. We need to have that in place as a taxonomy as well, because we want to show and hide things like this extra information about our happy hour calls down at the bottom. Now, lastly, we're gonna need logged in or logged out. It's a pretty simple membership system in the fact that it's really only controlling access as a binary choice. Either you have access or you don't. There's not multiple levels within that. We're gonna need to reference this drawing here so we know exactly how to set up the access controls for all of this information, but I'll probably go ahead and put this on a separate screen so you won't see it during this recording. Now I've already built all this and it's live on the internet now, but in order to show you everything, I really wanted to go through the process of actually setting all this up rather than just show you everything that had been done. So what I have here is just a copy of the block element I've created. I've just called this one event single demo since this is our demo version. I'll go ahead and pop open the list view here. It's a pretty simple setup, but here we have our hero section, which is just bringing in the post title. Underneath it, we're bringing in the date of the event. Now, both of these things are gonna show for all the users and all the event types, so we don't need to set any conditions on that. What we're really focused on here is all the content in the second section. So you'll have to forgive some of the placeholders here. Generate Blocks doesn't render all of the dynamic information inside the template, but I'll be sure to explain each one of these. So the first one we have here is our featured image. We can see here in the dynamic information here that it's bringing in that featured image. Next is the placeholder that we're gonna show instead of the video for past events. Now this is just a static image I'm bringing in. It's not actually dynamically showing the actual video, but it gives the idea that there's a video there. Next is the short code that actually brings in the YouTube video dynamically. Big shout out to Jonathan Jernigan. He did a video on how to use this with ACF and be able to bring these into your templates. I'll make sure to link that down in the description below. Underneath that is our first login or sign up call to action. This is going to be for the one for past events that's going to show to logged out users that I want close up to this image up here. Next is all of our dynamic content here. So this is going to be all the post content. We're using that for the description of the event. Down here we have our add to calendar and join Zoom buttons. Underneath that, the flag to log in or sign up to access the registration. And then finally, this little call out to happy hour down here at the bottom that kind of just gives a description of the event. So let's just start at the top here. Like I said, I have the Figma drawing over to the side so I can reference that to know exactly how we're doing all the access control. And I have already gone up and set all the taxonomies. I didn't show that in the video, but if we go here into the back end under ACF and taxonomies, you can see I've created two here. One is event schedules and then the other is event types. So if I go in here to our events, we'll see our event schedules, and we have the option of current, past, and upcoming. And if we go into event types right now, we have happy hour and webinar. Of course, I do have the block visibility plugin installed as well. If we go in here into our plugins, we can see block visibility. If you need to add that, you can just go to add new plugin. You can search for block visibility. And if we search for that here, you'll see that it comes up as the first search result and I already have it installed and activated. So let's go back into our template here and we'll start setting up our first condition. And the first thing we have here is our featured image, which is gonna be shown to all users, but for future events only. So over here on the right-hand side, we'll have this little tab for visibility. This is what gets added to the editor when you install the block visibility plugin. So we'll go ahead and click on this plus button. Like I said, we wanna show it to all users for logged in and logged out, but we do wanna only show it for future events. So for that, we're gonna to need to reference that event schedule taxonomy. To do that, we go up here under location. Here in our rule set, the rule we're gonna select down here is post taxonomy. The taxonomy is gonna be the event schedule, and then we can set the condition. I'm gonna do this as is any of these selected, and we'll go in here and select upcoming. So essentially what this rule set is saying is only show this if the event schedule is upcoming. So you have to kind of follow this logic through. If we didn't wanna show this, we could click the hide when rules apply, or we could change this to is none of the selected. It's pretty simple once you get the hang of it, but you do have to kind of go through the logic of all of it. All right, so that's all we need to set up on the first one. The next one here is this blurred image of the video. So this should be showing to logged out viewers, but only for past events. So we're gonna have to set two visibility controls on this. Again, we'll go ahead and select that image. We'll press the plus button here on the visibility and we'll go in here to location. Just like the last one, we wanna set this up for the taxonomy. So I'll scroll down here till I find post taxonomy. We're gonna choose the event schedule and we're gonna choose any of these selected and this is only gonna be for past events. 
So now this image is only gonna show if it's a past event, but it's gonna show for both logged in and logged out users, and we only wanna show it for logged out users. So we'll go back in here to visibility, click these three dots, and we're gonna do user role this time. This added a second set of visibility controls in here, and we're gonna change this to logged out. This way, this block is now only gonna to show to logged out visitors if the event schedule is set to past. Now for the video, we wanna show this only for past events again, but this is gonna be only for logged in visitors. So here, we'll go to our visibility, we'll go to user role, and we'll say this is only for logged in. That will take care of the access control for the logged in and logged out, but we need to use those location rules again to select the post taxonomy to make sure that we're only showing this for the past events. So here we have post taxonomy, event schedule is any of the selected past. So now we have this taken care of as well. Next on this list is the login or sign up for access replay. Again, this is gonna be for past and for logged out. So I'll speed through this real quick. The dynamic content here, which is all the description of the event, that's gonna be shown to everybody, so we don't need to worry about setting any conditions on it. The next here will be this section for our add to calendar and join Zoom links. This is only gonna be for future events and for logged in visitors, so we'll need to set that up as user role, and this is gonna be logged in. And of course, we'll do that location trick again where we go in here and set the post taxonomy, which is event schedule, is any of the selected upcoming. So now those will only show for upcoming events. If they're not logged in, we wanna show them this little flag to log in or sign up. So we'll go in here, we'll set our user role to logged out, and we'll do the same thing here to make sure this is only for future events. Post type taxonomy, event schedule, is any of the selected upcoming. Now that takes care of the bulk of it here, but I have this little extra thing down here I wanna show only for our happy hour calls. Now I might have some other things like this for different event types, and that might end up in a completely separate element, but for now I've just stuck it inside of this template as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this whole container. This little line that's above it is actually a pseudo element of this container. You just can't see that it's being selected here. Now for this one, it can be shown to both logged out and logged in users, but it only needs to show for happy hour calls. So for this one, again, we're gonna use the location, post taxonomy, but this time instead of event schedule, we're gonna set this to event type. We'll do is any of the selected, and then we're gonna choose happy hour. So with that, we set all the conditions on all of these elements. We'll go ahead and publish that so now it's live on the website. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like on the front end. I'll go ahead and go to our homepage here. Now I've set this up using those same taxonomies for the event schedule where we can see upcoming events here and past events down here. Of course, I am logged in in this view. So if I go into the happy hour, I should see the add to calendar and join Zoom links. But if we go into one of these past events like this webinar here, you can see the video is embedded, which is exactly what we wanted. And then we see the description here. Of course, we're not seeing the happy hour information on here because this wasn't a happy hour, it was a webinar. But if we went into one of our past happy hours, again, the replay, the description, no add to calendar stuff, but we do have the happy hour information down at the bottom of it. But let's take a look at what this would look like if we weren't logged in. To do that, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this URL and we'll go into an incognito window here and paste that in. Now, because I'm not logged in here, I'm not seeing the embed of this video like I was in the other version here. I'm seeing that blurred image instead. Underneath it, I am getting the login or sign up. And down here at the bottom, of course, I am still seeing the happy hour information because that's for both logged in and logged out users. If we go to one of these future events, maybe like this webinar, we can see the featured image here. We can see the description about this event and the login or sign up here, but there's no actual information to add this to your calendar because obviously you would need to be logged in to do that. If I put these two side by side, on the left we have the logged in version and on the right in the incognito window we're logged out, we can see there's some other differences that use the same principle across the website. So if for instance, I go to the directory in both of these, you'll see over here on the logged in version, we have a link here to add your listing or modify your listing. But if you're not logged in, you get prompted with log in or sign up to list your business. Here in one of our giveaway posts, if I scroll down here to the logged in version, you'll see there's actually a form here for people to enter the giveaway. But if I go down here on the logged out version, you can see again, they're prompted to log in or sign up to register for that giveaway. You might have also noticed that the menu at the top here is different. On the logged in version, we have an option here for billing that doesn't appear on the logged out. And on the logged out, we have the option to log in or sign up. 
This is actually controlled by a different plugin. This is a plugin called If Menu. It's also available in the repo, but it gives you some dynamic visibility options for your WordPress menus as well. There are all kinds of really neat things you can do with these visibility controls. For instance, here on the giveaways, you can see we have our registration opening soon for this check view giveaway. That's because I've set this event schedule to an upcoming event. But if I went and unchecked upcoming and changed it to current and hit save, we'll refresh on this side and we can see that this says registration is now open and we have the button to register for the giveaway, which takes you to that giveaway page. But if we take this out of current and we put it into past, again, I'll go ahead and save that. We'll refresh on the front end. We can see that that check view one is now listed in our past giveaways instead of our current or upcoming giveaways. And it's been replaced up here with a new giveaway coming soon. It's things like this that are a really great example of how block visibility can actually help you manage content, even if you're not doing some kind of membership site. Here on this giveaways page, I'm not really worried about logged in or logged out. I'm just worried about whether they see that it's an upcoming, a current, or a past giveaway. And I can control all of that with the block visibility plugin and just a simple taxonomy. Every time I use this plugin, I find some kind of new and creative way to really take advantage of all that it can do. Now for a membership website like this, you can obviously see where this would really come in handy, but I've ended up putting this into my starter site because I can always find some kind of excuse to use it. The developer, Nick Diego, seems like a really great dude, and he's took a ton of care to build this plugin in a way that it feels very native to the block editor, but it of course blows away anything the WordPress editor can do by default. Now, if you enjoyed today's video, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up, and if you wanna catch the next one, hit subscribe, and we'll see you then.